than Greek language in the Netherlands. Uh, the French itself has more uh, metaphors in general in the Dutch language. So language itself itself um, affects uh, and culture, of course, uh, affects political language. That is uh, important. Today I will focus on the effects of ideology on uh, the political ideology. There is definitely a relation between the language used in politics and uh, the political ideology. Uh, this topic has not studied. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, is a very important uh, relationship. That is why I wanted to to this relation. Um, more and more uh, in mass media is uh, commercialization of escape, globalization, uh, but uh, the role of political ideology itself in political communication is the effect of ideology for metaphor because uh, we can consider metaphors as in our uh, emotive It is very important to focus on emotive or more emotion in the political persuasion of calling as of a good argument. Logos and logos part action, emotion for instance back. Uh, then uh, logos is another component of a good uh, political uh, of good political reasonable uh, uh, then that one is real uh, logical, one should just sound logical, that is important. And a uh, chat uh, company good argumentation, but it's ethical really, is of a particular respect to the audience. One should not really be ethical, one should be the sort of audience at a particular moment. So the uh, coming for politician and important in it. Let me first uh, detail um, Political language and uh, political ideology. Uh, political language has been uh, detailed by of uh, but the nature of political language and ideology that interests me. What is the role of ideology in political language? Uh, several different of you in the field and the same. Uh, um, the, it, it is about the study of uh, ideology in, in pol political language should be patient. The uh, political communication of the uh, effect uh, in mass media, the role of effect in mass media, Doris Graeber, political communication uh, largely the effect. So that is very important. And their metaphors are very important. Let us say something about uh, ideology. Uh, I thought uh, for particular case to be, it is important to make that um, many approaches of ideology at, at a general uh, macro level which are very important, very linked uh, from uh, philosophy of language, from sociology. I'm very intrigued uh, the, the view of uh, Karl Mannheim about ideology, um, but also uh, Mannheim um, Says, uh, he complemented the total conception of ideology with the partial version that is very practical for a complete language. A practical version, um, well, Mannheim said that different uh, ideologies uh, exist next to each other and they strive to be the most influential. So that is the general frame of uh, ideology practical view that is very tempting for empirical quantitative uh, research. So uh, most schoolers seem indeed to agree that there coexist several uh, ideologies um, and there are several uh, categorizations made uh, of ideologies. One that is seen as there is strong connection to political reality, a uh, distinction between uh, the certain ideology, the conservative ideology, the liberal ideology, and the fascist ideology. Uh, it applies to um, polit the political landscape in most European countries. Uh, so it's also a practical categorization 
for empirical research on electric in different countries and to do uh, comparative empirical research in a quantitative way and in a qualitative way on uh, politics and the discourse that goes with it in several uh, languages in several countries, uh, around the world and of course also uh, in Europe. Uh, there are many interesting concepts in the field of political language, political uh, ideology, uh, but indeed we want to narrow uh, the scope for our empirical research. Um, and when we at the field of um, the study of the political discourse in politics, uh, we see that, that most studies have a narrow focus in the Some focus, for instance, on inequality in education, but also there are uh, some studies about the discourse of right-wing extremism in several countries. Indeed, uh, the, uh, the growth of, uh, unfortunately, of the country scientists and uh, interested in uh, studying the topic in order to explain, uh, to explain why uh, do these groups, these extreme value groups, are successful in this context. Has the discourse something to do with uh, rulers in uh, nations uh, focus on the role of particular uh, newspapers of, uh, of certain um, type uh, in it, uh, such as the, the popular newspapers, the tabloids, also the role of uh, broadcasting in the success of right-wing extremism. That is uh, also very uh, focused in research on uh, communication and right-wing extremism. Um, other political science uh, try to focus just on the ideology of the parties in, uh, in particular countries. And uh, well, my focus is on uh, the role of discourse, the role of uh, metaphor also in this process of persuasion uh, that is done by uh, several parties, several political groups, and especially uh, the right-wing extremist groups in Europe. And uh, the case study is on uh, right extremist discourse of the uh, Vlaams Bloc, Vlaams Blanc party uh, in Flanders. Uh, Vlaams Blanc, uh, because um, this is a na nationalist radical right-wing party. Uh, first one was Vlaams Bloc. Um, that was very successful from an electoral point of view. And in 1991, we had uh, what they call in Flanders Black Sunday, because this was really uh, the uh, election year um, that the success started of this right-wing extremist political party. Uh, about one year ago, um, this, the success continued of this party. About one year ago, um, the party was condemned for being racist, <coughs> and it changed its name, its name into Vlaams Belang, uh, in order uh, to continue existing. Uh, and um, some scholars say, well, uh, Vlaams Bloc is not anymore like Vlaams Bloc, they are less extreme because they tried to uh, the political system in order um, to be allowed to, um, to uh, stay in, 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 in power because now there is this uh, phenomenon of the cordon sanitaire in Belgium. Uh, in which all other political parties exclude um, this party, Flans Bloc, Flans Blanc, from power, from government. Nobody wants to govern with Flans Bloc, Flans Blanc, nor at the national level, nor at the regional level, nor at the local level. Uh, they are excluded ever. So this is certainly a reason for Flans Bloc, Flans Blanc, 
to change the image. And what we want to know in our case study is whether this, there was a real change, whether um, Vlaams Belang is still this extreme right, uh, radical, um, nationalist, racist party, uh, or whether it is it has changed, it's, it is really a more moderate party with a moderate discourse. This is what the case is about. And as I told you, uh, we use language as a research instrument uh, for this, in order to, to examine this political question. Uh, is uh, Vlaams Vlaams still a racist party, uh, a extreme right party, or is it moderate party so that other political groups in Belgium uh, can consider to uh, take it into uh, the government and uh, to let it uh, govern at all in Belgium. So this is kind of a political question for which we use language method and research uh, to investigate this question. Uh, why, why metaphors, uh, well indeed metaphors are at the heart of the political uh, discourse. Metaphors have powerful effects according uh, to uh, many schoolers. And when we look at metaphors, uh, I made a distinction between several types of metaphors, indeed. Um, some metaphors are more powerful uh, than other metaphors. Um, I have a really validated scheme um, that I uh, applied in several case studies, applied in this case in order to examine Asban Vlaams work and that I used in order to examine differences in and the ideology between Vlaams Block, Vlaams Block and other political groups in Belgium. Um, according to four uh, metaphor model uh, universal uh, phenomena, indeed all of the people are able to recognize metaphors. And then there is one variable I use in my metaphor model uh, in order to construct a metaphor index, which is a metaphor power index, uh, the power of political discourse, political mass media language, etc., political news media language. Uh, so the, the frequency of metaphors is one uh, variable in this index. Another variable is uh, the intensity of the metaphor and intensity is the strength of uh, reference to the original uh, meaning of uh, the uh, focus of the metaphor. Indeed, there are several, um, several uh, categories, um, content categories, of course, too. Uh, there is uh, this, the third value in the metaphor index, metaphor power index. Uh, this third variable relates to the content of the focus. Uh, and the idea is that some uh, sources uh, or for the uh, focus of the metaphor are much more powerful, have much more effects than other, uh, other domains uh, for the focus. And I developed a, a categorization of, uh, of content for metaphor uh, domains, metaphor focus. Um, I, I let it show here. Um,
uh, it is um, the stream um, is published in the first chapter of metaphorical world politics. So there are several categories: uh, strong content categories, and, uh, weak categories. These are the weak content categories. They have a value. The weakest is these are the metaphors referring uh, to everyday life. The popular metaphors. Um, and these are the metaphors, for instance, uh, in this um, politics as family, the family indeed, uh, to the house, uh, and so on. These are the, the weaker uh, kind of metaphors, uh, and we get the value one. Uh, so politics as everyday life metaphors are the weaker metaphors. Politics as house, as housekeeping, as grocery. These are uh, mainly the metaphors that, that refer to everyday life, material reality. They are not that much appropriate reality because they exactly refer to reality. Um, the more powerful uh, metaphor categories are the ones actually, that are appropriate to escape reality. Um, then the category of nations uh, kind of ambivalent. Um, and different as a category um, because uh, it can positive, um, positive positive computation um, and also uh, uh, negative is more descriptive like uh, computation like when well, uh, good and well can be can be less good of course. Uh, yesterday I heard uh, the that uh, metaphor of nature that they rather conservative in general, one would say they are appropriate to use when one wants uh, to destroy uh, the structure of society, of course, they are more adapted to, to society. Then there is uh, the category of the Political force that is a bit more strong than the other categories that has the value three politics and society techniques as um, as politics. Uh, these are examples, all examples of what could fit into such a content domain uh, for metaphors. These are the more defined metaphors. Uh, uh, therefore, also uh, we give them value. Uh, then we go to the even more stronger metaphors, and we come to the metaphors that represent politics as a disaster, as a nightmare, for instance, politics as, uh, as virus. These are all um, examples of uh, such uh, about, uh, metaphors uh, in the domain of politics as violence, for instance, politics as serving politics as torture, Politics as battle, politics as war. Uh, as you see, these are metaphors that are, that are very often used in, in the domain and in political language. Uh, we gave them the value uh, four, and then we come uh, to an even more set of content, empowered content uh, uh, categories, uh, in which politics is really metaphors as sport. Um, as baseball, as football, um, or as a game, a politics, as chess, as detective, as drama, as a uh, uh, wild west. Uh, everybody knows about it. was used by George W. Bush uh, because of September 11. Uh, these were the wild west uh, movement for this category. Um, then there is uh, the politics that gets the value of five. Politics as ballads, politics as poem, politics as religion, politics dance. These are the uh, metaphors that, that are really very appropriate to escape reality, to escape from reality. So here the, the metaphor is very uh, important. Then we come to the highest combat category of metaphor, which includes uh, the metaphors referring to the body. Um, yesterday, um, colleagues have already 
detailed uh, this type of, of met, uh, in a closer context of literature. These are indeed very important metaphors, very powerful metaphors, very powerful in politics indeed. Um, the medical metaphors are of the same type as the body metaphors. Uh, they refer to, to very important things. Uh, they refer, refer to cancer, to uh, is compared to infection, or the political enemy is uh, represented as an infection. Uh, politics as psy uh, psychiatry, uh, as therapy. We are all familiar with these uh, metaphors, and these are very powerful, uh, very powerful metaphors. Uh, the question is. Um, can we link um, uh, this type of metaphors to particular ideologies, to right-wing, uh, to liberal ideology, to the socialist ideology? I have, uh, I have applied the, this uh, metaphor uh, of Belgian political parties and, of course, of the right-wing extremist uh, Vlaams Vlaam. And um, now I will go to uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yes, thank you. Um, here is a rep representation of the metaphor in this for the Belgian political parties. Please call you um, So here we look at it just like that. Political color uh, of all the Belgian parties and it that the metaphor for Christ, uh, the battery by this particular highest more power uh, compared to other play groups uh, has an extra high metaphor uh, from the uh, that that population and more time work in there is the metaphor um, the metaphor use of the parties are more interesting the more you go on the right um, you more out this course and the extreme right with the most metaphors, the most of the metaphors in general, the block discourse, of them. but uh, there are much more of them in the discourse by the right wing parties. Okay. Uh, this is also the European Parliament of 1980, uh, the case is on, on the big government, and not only uh, the, the political factions that have uh, much more also the uh, left with groups have more metaphors and content of use of metaphor uh, different extreme left uh, writing groups. They both um, aim at uh, uh, more or less uh, destroying um, the world uh, of society. They, uh, they do it in a very way with negative met metaphor. So this very little groups uh, that want to destroy the society of the world. They destroy the to also to destroy the actual. Just uh, they aim more to the content of their metaphor is safer than the political. Uh, the part in the society, the frequency, the type, also even the content of They are not so much in the use of metaphor. And it's logical because here we have the factor of, of the common policy and political community by a political marketing for uh, the purely ideological support of the centrist in part and, and the, uh, uh, the discourse of the other groups. Um, now we look at um, the results for our research on, on the right discipline discourse. Um, we looked at uh, levels at the discourse of Fred Blanc uh, for approximately five years. Um, and um, we looked at all the studies with metaphors and compared results and other assumptions about uh, biology. Uh, biology. Um, the, uh, they did represent uh, the characteristics of this ideology. Uh, before and for uh, nationalism, quite strong uh, xenophobia, of course. Uh, we all found it uh, in those uh, press releases, uh, and and uh, this report. Uh, by um, we try to make it more or less reliable to the time and, and uh, calculate the average of the results. So this radical, uh, radical change backwards ideolo ideologically. And we found it in, in the discourse in these pieces. We used 500 practices, uh, so then 62 and uh, 102 words. Um, 
developed to create schemes that were used at the frequency of the metaphor in the press releases. And which topics in particular use the metaphor in this? Because uh, in the anti politics, very important topics. Uh, in deep frequency and also in metaphor power. So in, in terms of content, we noticed that there, were, there was a slightly more moderate, um, moderate uh, discourse in terms of team and all these two teams could be traced back to the traditional fascism but in a negative way, of course, it was the content was always negative even if they talked about uh, the cultural topic and apparently to be traced back to the original fascist uh, For style, uh, the style speaks of Flams belongs to the in a demagogic style. Uh, some examples are uh, the Flemish demand for the evidence of death, of, of, of illness, of body, of violence, the Flemish capitulation, um, and so on. I won't go into it the um, uh, of the high level the metaphor index for the Flanders block period is not at all the course has become more moderate in style. We can see how it is still by Flanders block uh, in all the uh, uh, So point of political communication, they are very efficient, they do more about aggressive rate style changes change. It was a uh, class belong. They were part liners by the aggressive rhetoric. Uh, they also want to do extreme voters kind of make uh, their teams more in order to empower the government. We also looked at uh, the different version of um, the party. Indeed, there are three uh, real leaders at the party whose discourse is very long uh, has not a say and what is a difference at the personal level to uh, well I stop here uh, I am in touch Instructions um, to the students, um, and then we uh, compare the rates. I think uh, the, the basis, the main thing is that a metaphor relies on contract conflict between uh, the focus of the metaphor and the frame of, of the metaphor. And uh, uh, an important um, an important criteria is uh, the strength of reference to the original meaning of. Um, of the content of the, of the metaphor. So the metaphor is, is considered to be something that is strange to the context, that is in conflict, in contrast uh, to the context, and um, and the basic um, idea is that this is the, uh, the starting point. I want to just mention, is, is there a difference in strangeness, for instance, whether it's more nominal strangeness you found, or is it more verbal? Because you could say X is Y, that is Y metaphor, but you could also go away from the noun and for instance, um, politics is some kind of war, so it's bad. then you can have the noun battle, but you can also have to fight someone's argument when one is in the noun, the other is in the verb, and I was interested whether you could identify a difference in your No, uh, we didn't We didn't go, go we didn't take that part. Um, but it, it, it just uh, counts uh, to when, when a politician says that uh, the other party is putting the problems in the refrigerator, it's clearly metaphor. It's not, it's not, not that difficult uh, to, to, to recognize uh, and uh, categorize that. And then you let it do by, by uh, five orders at the same time and you, you make the average. You, you come to more or less need it is difficult to define a metaphor, but it is quite easy to identify. Just a footnote, in Dyke's book on Portuguese, because I'm metaphor, there are some points that it's not so easy. It is 
index. That is uh, what uh, the method is about. It's empirically validated. Uh, it's a good basis. There were two people who had the hands up. Very briefly, if we can do a squeeze them in. Well, I, I'm afraid this is reiterating this point, so I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to say that I I work with many students over the years in, uh, in Amsterdam and in Antwerp and um, all to work in languages. My experience is that it, it's not that difficult. And it's also not the put in content categories because these are very general categories. We use it in several countries and also uh, uh, they are very general. So you can uh, apply these and, and uh, my experience is it's to um, identify metaphors according to this method. Yes, we did. We are on it. We, uh, we calculated the reliability indexes, and uh, and we are also uh, following with great interest uh, the work of, of uh, Gates on this issue. So indeed, it's a it's a very important concern for us. Yes. So it is done when it is an expert folder and it is made in a thousand way and. Uh, we always um, do several coders at the same time that are instructed, that are expert coders, and then we compare the results and we often discuss it. So uh, it, it's a, it is a, a very uh, a very serious concern for us, the reliability, but um, it is always empirically achieved. So um, it, it is working. It's very important. Yes, we, we are working on that. I think we'll have to leave it there now, so... Um. <laughs>